Tonight, I'm going to be attempting to photograph a nebula with this telescope setup you see, all from the comfort of my own backyard. I'm Ryan M, and welcome to Orion Astro and Nature. So what is this setup, and why is every single piece of equipment on here necessary to take a photo of space? Shouldn't you just need a good telescope with a nice camera to take a photo of space? Well, a lot of the reason that this is needed is due to the fact that the Earth rotates. So how you counteract that is by getting one of these things, a German equatorial mount for astrophotography. Now these things, uh, you point it at anywhere in the night sky and they actually have motors inside that track at the exact rate that the night sky moves. So you should, in theory, lock on to a point in the sky and have it stay fixed in the field of view the whole night. Now, that's when you have lots of errors. Um, some things called periodic error interfere with um, the tracking and could have occasional error. Sometimes um, your balance might be off. Anything can really happen. And that is when this mini telescope comes in handy. Now this is called a guide scope. And this red little thing at the end of it is actually a camera. Um, now this, this telescope is actually pointed at the exact same spot in the sky that this main scope is. Um, and it detects a few stars at, in that field of view, right? This camera detects a few of those stars and locks onto them and says, okay, this star should be here. Now, if the mount has some sort of error, the camera will detect that those stars moved out of where they should be. So then this camera, since it's connected to the mount, will actually send a pulse back to this mount and correct it to be exactly where it should be. Now this is called auto guiding and it is really, really amazing. And I use it every night for taking pictures of space. Now, uh, I live very close to Chicago, right? So uh, you'll see later tonight when, um, when the sun goes down, there is a really, really strong glow coming from our west southwest skies and that's from the city of chicago and this is called light pollution when you have a lot of lights they don't even have to be pointed up they could be reflecting off the ground or pointed out any of that any of that unnecessary lighting is really going into the sky and lighting it up and this is really impacting astrophotography and this is called light pollution um, now obviously what you really want are some nice dark skies but unfortunately, unless I want to take a 90 minute drive to the Milky Way, I can't have that. So that is when this comes in handy. This is called an Optolong L Extreme light pollution filter. It's a narrow band filter, meaning that the bandwidths of light that this lets through is very, very narrow. So you can see it looks like a mirror from here. This is because basically every single wavelength of visible light is being reflected off of the filter away from the camera sensor. Um, the only wavelengths it's letting through are wavelengths um, from nebulas like uh, H-alpha, hydrogen alpha, and oxygen-3. Those are the main red and blue gases you see in those beautiful nebula photos. Um, so I use this and I put it in between the telescope and the camera sensor for some great, great images. Now, what is this? You may see this um, is actually not a part of the telescope. Now this is called a field flattener. When you're using the type of telescope that I am, an apochromatic refractor, the corners of your images can get a little distorted. The stars can look a little bit warped like lines. And that's just due to the type of glass that this telescope is made with. Uh, it's really unavoidable unless um, you get a different type of telescope. Uh, but I really like these types of refractors. I think they're great for deep sky imaging. So I would prefer to buy something called a field flattener. Now this puts a little extra glass in between your camera sensor and telescope, and it flattens out the field, meaning those stars on the edge, they're perfectly round with the field flattener in there. Um, and uh, it really, really helps. It doesn't change your field of view at all. It doesn't zoom in anymore. Um, it doesn't change any sort of field of view. It just flattens the stars, and it's really, really amazing. This is the Orion Field Flattener for short refractors, in case anyone is wondering. Um, and the guide scope here, this is the Orion 50 millimeter guide scope. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I think High Point Scientific sells it, Orion's website as well. Um, 
And if anyone's wondering, the mount that I'm using is the Skywatcher EQM35 Pro go-to mount. You can also get this on High Point Scientific on Skywatcher's website as well. That's another really popular option. Um, and so all of this needs to be run somehow. Now, normally, uh, if you're just using this mount as it's advertised, you would have a little plastic hand controller that you would use to control it and slew it around. And um, that's great. That's what I started out as. Uh, that's what I started out doing when I was using this mount. But eventually, if you want to use things like auto guiding and a more precise go-to accuracy um, plate solving, which I'll get into a little bit later, you want to control it with a software. So I actually use a USB type B cable connected to my PC, my laptop, which is an HP general laptop that you can find at a lot of tech stores. I actually control the mount and a lot of these accessories through software called Nina. It's free, it's amazing. I use it every night while I'm out here. Um, some may argue that, some may prefer paid softwares like Astrophotography Tools, another really popular one. I tend to stick with Nina only because it fits what I like about this hobby. Once you've set up all your once you've set up all your gear and once you have all the technical issues figured out, now you just have to wait until it gets dark.